against the 6 and 4 Redskins tied for the top spot in the NFC East with the Cowboys, Giants and the Cardinals. It is Redskins kind of weather here at RFK, a 70% chance of showers. It rained all night. That means an off track and everybody knows that the Hogs like to run and block in an off track in the slop if you will. Hi again everybody. I'm Jim Kelly, former Dallas Cowboy All-Pro wide receiver Drew Pearson alongside. When you think of Drew Pearson, the Dallas Cowboys and the Redskins, you think of all those great encounters they've had in the past. What kind of memories do you have coming back into the stadium? Well, Jim, every time I step into the stadium, a big chill comes over my body. A lot of great memories from the past, from the games with the Cowboys and the Redskins. But what makes this stadium unique is the crowd. It's like a 12th man for the Redskins. They're very vocal, very aggressive. And also, you got the grass surface, so it's like old-fashioned football. How about any old bumps and bruises? Can you still feel them? I certainly feel them, but I guarantee you I won't feel them after this game. You'll leave the stadium healthier than you have in the past. Healthy is not the situation for the fifth NFL all-time rushing leader, John Riggins of the Redskins. He will not start. He will play, however, in goal line and short rushing situations out with back spasms and George Brett syndrome. His place taken by a rookie out of Miami. Keith Griffin is rookie out of Miami. He will replace Riggins. And when he's in there, they lose a lot of poundage, about 75 pounds, but they add a lot of speed. And the Redskins will definitely alter their game plan when Keith Griffin is in the game. The Lions are also missing their diesel on offense. Billy Sims out for the year, averaging five yards per carry when he left because of knee surgery. His place taken by a second year back out of Bucknell. Ken Jenkins rushed for over 70 yards last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. Caught eight passes for over 120 yards, so he's proven he can play in the National Football League. When you think of the Redskins, of course, you think of their field general, Joe Theismann. He pronounced it Theismann back in 1966. He's the quarterback here at South River High School, the Rams. Theismann had the good arm, and watch who he's throwing to. He wore number 15 back then. He wore number 88 for the Cowboys. Our partner, Drew Pearson. <laughs> Threw that one in on me again. That's the Drew zone. I was catching them back then. But Joe and I did have a chance to reminisce about our days at South River High School. Uh, he's uh, developed into one of the top quarterbacks in the National Football League. One positive constant for the Redskins all season for their offense has been Joe Theismann. Took the Redskins to the Super Bowl the last two years. Redskins and the Detroit Lions here at RFK Stadium. The Lions have won the toss. They've elected to receive. Jeff Hayes will spot it at the 35. Pete Mandeley, 82, to the top of your screen. And Robbie Martin and Alvin Hall back deep for the Detroit Lions. We're underway here in Redskin country. It hits at the 12 and goes out of bounds at the 6-yard line. So Jeff Hayes will tee it up 5 yards back at the 30 and will do it one more time. The Detroit Lions, three, six, and one. Three and a half games back of the Chicago Bears. A man under siege right now in Detroit. Head coach Monty Clark still has four years left on his current contract. A man that led the Lions to the NFC Championship a year ago. Hard to believe he's under so much pressure so soon. Well, he did a great job last year with the Lions and the bad start they had in the second half of the season. They made, won some big games, got themselves back into the playoffs, but uh, this year that through injuries and uh, other problems they've been having, uh, they've been struggling so far. But with the Bears having some injury problems, too, quarterback Jimmy McMahon is out with a lacerated kidney. That NFC race is still wide open. There is what the Lions have not done in Washington, and that's win. Well, it's pretty tough to, to win up here in RFK Stadium. Like I said in the top of the show, the, the fans are very vocal. They're very active. And when the Redskins do something, they sure let their team know that they're behind them. So we'll try it from the 30 again. This is Alvin Hall across the 5. Looks to the right side across the 20 and gets hammered down at the 23-yard line. So Gary Danielson will open up at quarterback for Coach Monty Clark. And, of course, missing in the backfield, Billy Sims. His place taken by Kenny Jenkins. And Drew has already told you what a great game he had a week ago against the Philadelphia Eagles. Leonard Thompson, the big play man at wide receiver. And an offensive line that Monty Clark says, hey, that's our soup line. They've had so many injuries on the offensive front of Detroit. Rubick is the tight end. Leonard Thompson wide to the left side. Kenny Jenkins, number 31, the lone running back. Jeff Chadwick comes out wide to the right side. First and ten, first snap from scrimmage. James Jones out of the backfield, breaks it across the 30, up near the 32. He'll be just shy of first down yardage in the grasp of Ken Coffey, the strong side safety. And speaking of the defense, the Redskins with that 4-3. Well, the great, great front, defensive front for the Redskins, led by the man in the middle, Big Dave Butts. 
There's the linebackers, again, led by the man in the middle, Neil Oakowitz, but Mel Kaufman's having a real good year this year. In the secondary, a lot of speed back there with beat, beat, Daryl Green in the secondary, and some hitters with Ken Coffey and Curtis Jordan. Lions look at second and short, less than a yard. Reese McCall, Rob Rubick, double tight end. McCall in motion, top of the screen. James Jones, first down and more across the 35. He gets hammered down at the 37 by Curtis Jordan, number 22 out of Texas Tech. And the Lions open up with that good offensive scheme of things. Well, they came out with a short pass to James Jones. They like to go to their backs in their passing game, and that created a good situation for second and short yardage, and they gave it back to Jones on a running play, and he picked up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 of the Redskins. Leonard Thompson wide to the left side. To the near side is Jeff Chadwick, number 89. Danielson just threw that one away, looking for David Lewis, who has 14 catches so far this year. David Lewis, a bit of a disappointment. He's the Lions' number one draft pick, but uh, somewhat criticized by quarterback Gary Danielson. Well, he's criticized because of the big salary he got, and that's really no fault for his. The money was there, so he, the best thing for him to do was, would be to take it. But he hasn't been catching the football this year, only 12 receptions. Uh, for the year, and just the Lions just haven't been using him effectively in their passing game. Lewis signed a $1.9 million contract, another rookie out of Northern Arizona, a $1.1 million contract, and between them they've caught 14 passes. Lions looking at second and 10. Nothing doing to Jeff Chadwick. Daryl Green stayed at home. That's a tough pass to throw on Daryl Green because it's a quick setup, a quick route, but Daryl Green is so quick, they call him MX, 10 speed, and he gets that ball carry in a hurry. You see the quickness. He was beat on the play on that short route, but the quickness, they only gained two yards on the play. Line of scrimmage, the 39 now of Detroit. Danielson breaks the huddle, looks at third and eight. Thompson comes out wide to the right side. Nickel back in for the Washington Redskins. Ricky Smith, number 26 to Chadwick, who did not hang on right at the 48. That would have been a first down. Daryl Green back on the coverage again. So we'll see the punting unit, and it's Mike Black for the Detroit Lions, who had some confidence problems earlier. He's averaging about 41.8 yards per kick. They brought in a rookie punter out of San Diego State, Mike Saxon, to put some competition on Mike Black at camp, and young Mr. Saxon almost booted Black off the roster. Back deep, Mike Nelms, and boy, when he gets the football, Look out. Well, he's Mr. Excitement, punt returner, kick returner personified. Well, 38 left to go in a scoreless first quarter. Lions drive stalled on their first possession. Black, and he bangs a beauty. It is a high, towering kick. It backs Nelms up to the 12. Gets a block and has running room up to the 20, and that's where Theismann and the Redskins will start. We played 12-26 in a four scoreless first quarter here at RFK Stadium. Keep in mind, the Redskins, 6-4. and four, They're tied for the top spot in the NFC East with the Cardinals, the Giants, and the Chiefs. Play action fake in the floating pocket. Theismann wants it all. Complete at the 30-yard line for Calvin Mohammed. What a find Bobby Bethard came up with with Calvin Mohammed. Joe Gibbs told us at the Redskins practice yesterday, we can't believe we got him. But if we keep looking or trying to find what's wrong with Calvin Mohammed and the Raiders let him go, but he's a fourth round. He came to the Redskins when Charlie Brown got hurt for a fourth round draft choice. And he's been uh, just a super fine for the Washington Redskins. Joe Gibbs' eyes just absolutely lit up when he started talking about Muhammad. He thinks he's got a chance to become one of the all-time great ones. Second and ten, it's Seisman went up top early. Keep in mind, John Riggins, the fifth leading all-time ground game in the history of the National Football League, out because of back spasms and George Brett syndrome, if you will. He is expected in on short yardage. Keith Griffin, right side, and the little bowling ball barrels up to the 12, 27-yard line. It'll bring up third and short. Let's check in on the Eagles game. Let's go to New York. Here's Brent. And Jim, the Eagles strike first on the unbeaten Miami Dolphins, and it is Ron Jaworski's favorite receiver, Mike Quick, 19 yards out. Eagles seven, Dolphins nothing. Back to Jeff. 
So a quick scoring strike from Jaworski to Mike Quick and the Redskins get the Eagles at Veterans Stadium next week. Philadelphia, 4-5-1, and one, so their playoff hopes, they're not out of it by any stretch. Otis Wansley now checks in at running back. Number 39 for Washington on third and three. That's a Washington first down if he hangs onto the ball. It's ruled an incompleted pass at the 35, looking for Mark McGrath, number 83, out of Montana State. The hit by William Graham in his third year out of Texas. That was a great play. Good play designed for the third and short situation. But William Graham made the play and uh, keep uh, the Redskins from picking up the first down and continuing this drive. Now they have to punt the football. There is what Jeff Hayes has done so far this season. Alvin Hall is back deep, number 35 for the Detroit Lions. Early momentum to the Lions. Very important to shut the Redskins down early here in their home ballpark. 11-31 left to play in this first quarter. High, but a wobbly kick. Hall will field it at the 33. Looks for the wall, but there is none. The Redskins just excel on specialty teams. Back there in the coverage, Anthony Washington out of Fresno State. So the Lions held defensively. Their second possession starts from their own 35 after a 40-yard punt by Jeff Hayes. A rusher as well, Billy Soon. Jeff Chadwick to the top of his screen. Alone running back now, James Jones. James Jones on the flare from Danielson. Got some blockers, and he hurls across the 40 up near the 43-yard line in the grasp of big Dave Butts. 12th year out of Purdue, and he still runs like a fullback. Well, this is what the Detroit Lions like to do. They like to work that short passing game. That's why Danielson has that effective passing percentage this year. And their number one receiver is James Jones. And he gets a good block out there from the cornerback. And he just picks up some big yards. Second down and one. Rookie out of Maryland, Dave Diadio, number 44 now, is in at fullback as James Jones took a good lick. Second and one. Jenkins hurls across the 45, keeps the knees spinning up near the 49, and that's a Detroit Lion first down, tackled by Neil Olkowitz. Well, the Redskins have been a rate second in the league against the rush, but the last three weeks they've been giving up quite a few yards, and Ken Jenkins, you can see the power on this young back, he's uh, only... Excuse me, 185 pounds, Jim, and, uh, but he packed a lot of power in his, uh, when he carries that football. Thompson left, Chadwick right on first and ten. Motion across by Rob Rubick, the tight end. Danielson airborne again. James Jones again. And inside Redskin territory down at the 47-yard line. Neil Olkowitz, who's a deputy sheriff in the offseason, sort of a gunslinger, shot him down there. Well, again, Detroit likes to throw that ball on first down, but it's a controlled passing attack situations like they have now at second and six. A rookie out of California, David Lewis, number 87, checks in at tight end right now for Danielson and company. Line of scrimmage, the 47 of the Washington Redskins. Nine and a half left to play in a scoreless first quarter. Flat to the right. Here comes James Jones as the eighth back, and there goes Jenkins. Inside the 35-yard line, another first down. Curtis Jordan that time prevented a touchdown. The quick hitter up the middle. You can see the Detroit Lions offensive line really blowing out the Washington Redskins offensive line. Good blocking up front, good cross blocking, good trap blocking, and Jenkins takes a quick opener for a first down. That trap blocking by Larry Lee, the center, in there now for the injured Amos Fowler and by Chris Dietrich. Again, Monty Clark refers to his offensive line as the soup line. That left side, boy, they've had four different players playing left tackle, three different players playing left guard, and three different centers. flag is down. Jenkins with a nice move inside the 30. It's down in the backfield of the Detroit Lions, which generally indicates holding. Pat Haggerty, our official this afternoon, and it'll back the Lions up. And you know, penalties have been the story, one of the stories, injuries and penalties of Detroit season. That's right, Jim. This is what's been happening to the Lions. Their, their offense is doing good. They're ranked number three in the National Football Conference, but the penalties have offset that and also with the turnover. So they've been having their problems we with have the penalties. Holding number 73 offense. That is Don Laster, ironically a former Redskin. So he was with the Redskins last year and picked up by the Detroit Lions this year and the Lions were having trouble in their offensive line. 
it's now first and 20. The ball backed up to the 46 of the Redskins. Thompson to the left side, and to the near side is Jeff Chadwick. Danielson in trouble. Danielson down at the Detroit 41. Dexter Manley, who had a great game Monday night against the Falcons, came crashing through. Dexter Manley with two forced fumbles on Monday night. No contest. Well, it's a big, big play for the Washington Redskins. Manley takes the inside route on this pass rush, and Danielson really has no time. There was no match between Manley and Don Laster on that play. What did Dexter tell you at practice yesterday? He's still got four or five speed in the 40. Well, he says he can run four or five, but he has to show me to prove it to me. Must be without the helmet and the, and the rest of the pads. Uh. That's the big cowboy boots he wears all the time. Second and 32. 20 left to go. Leonard Thompson, top of your screen. Shotgun now for Danielson. Nichols wide right. Danielson down again. All the way back at the 32. It's third and half the field. How are the Saints doing this afternoon? We will find out in a few seconds. Daryl Grant and Charles Mann putting the pressure there and pinching in on Gary Danielson. Again, Daryl Danielson in the shotgun formation, but the the Redskins are doing a lot of stunning in their offensive line. You see Mann coming on the inside. He was lined up on the outside, but he took the inside route to the quarterback and put that pressure on Danielson, and the rest of the Redskins cleaned it up. I'm not sure that Mike Black can punt the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. They've got to get all the way down to the 26-yard line of Washington for a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 33 of Detroit. This is Redskins style of football so far. James Jones up to midfield they get two of the penalties back well we asked how the Saints were doing and Brent's got the answer for an update back to New York Brent Jim we got an interesting call here it's the old Green Bay Packers special fourth and inches and Richard Todd comes up throwing for New Orleans has got Hobie Brenner now for a 37 yard touchdown Saints over Atlanta back to Jim it has not been a good week for the Falcons. They, of course, lost here at RFK Stadium on Monday night. Mike Nelms back deep, anticipating Mike Black's punt. There's what Michael has done so far this afternoon. Nelms awaits at his own 10. High, wobbly kick away from Nelms. He comes up and fields at the 13. Breaks it across the 20 and another nice return. So the Redskins start in good field position after the tackle by Dexter Bussey. Ironically, the man who held all of Billy Sims' records before Billy came out of Oklahoma. We've got a scoreless tie here at RFK Stadium. 6.50 left to play. The Lions and the Redskins zip to zip. The back spasmed and George Brett syndrome, John Riggins. The offensive line, the Hogs, of course, and familiar names. What's the tonnage? We added it up last night. 1,397 pounds for the front five of the Washington Redskins. There's the beef. Second and four. An easy one to Calvin Mohammed and look out. A great illustration of why Joe Gibbs' eyes lit up. The moves right there from Calvin Mohammed. A great addition for the Redskins to find a receiver of the caliber of Calvin Mohammed out there available. And he takes just a short pass on second and four, and he just turns it into a big play. He has outstanding speed. And you saw the move that he put on Bruce McNorton right there. He looked like Drew Pearson. Gave him the hip and took it away. Is that your date? <laughs> They look cuter now than they used to look when I used to play for the Cowboys. 17-yard pickup, first and 10 for Theismann and company. Airborne again. Mohammed again, inbounds? No, out of bounds at the 33. Bruce McNorton back there on the coverage, but you saw the good hands by Calvin Mohammed. Well, that play right there showed me what type of receiver Calvin Mohammed is. You see Theismann taking that short drop. He reads the zone. He sees that. Mohammed's going to be uh, open on that on that flat there, and he just drills it out there. You can see the strength of Theismann's arms, but look at that catch by Calvin Mohammed, and just barely gets uh, that one foot in, almost gets two in. But the athletic ability on that play shows me something that Calvin Mohammed can play in this league. There's no question about that. Theismann, one out of four, 18 yards. As he looks at second and ten from the 48 of Washington. Keith Griffin 
nothing doing and great pursuit from behind by William Gay in his seventh year out of USC and you take a look at the front four of the Detroit Lions. Well they got a good front four led by their all pro players William Gay and Doug English but Michael Colfer is having a real good year playing that left defensive end position. The man that makes the linebackers go is Ken Fentetti in the middle. And there's the secondary led by Bobby Boogaloo Watkins. Watkins came up with a crucial interception of Philadelphia last week in that tie, picking off Jaworski at the five-yard line. 4.52 left to go, quarter number one. Eisman looks at third and 13. Jeff Moore out of Jackson State is the lone running back. Motion coming across the tight end. Calvin Mohammed. Inside the 10 at the 8. He beat Bobby Watkins. Well, in preparation for the, the Lions, I'm sure the Redskins realize that they can go deep on the Lion cornerback. You see the good move by Mohammed off the line of scrimmage, and then that speed, the separation between Mohammed and the defensive back. He just leaves him and watch this catch. He just stretches out and Feisman lays it in there. A great play, great combination. And Coach Joe Gibbs said these guys are just learning each other. Feisman and, and Mohammed. I hate to see what happens once they get to know each other. What was it that Gibbs told us? As you look at Bruce McNorton, boy, the Lions can't afford too many more injuries. They've been so banged up. He was talking about Calvin Mohammed. He said he's a glider. He goes over. But there is one problem. He, he pulls up a little bit short on his pass route sometimes. Well, he gives that definite move. I guess in, in uh, L.A. with the Raiders, they ran their routes different than what they do here with the Redskins. And he would, all, at the end of his routes, would always make a definite move. Joe Gibbs called it a hint which was really the fake, and he come out the other way, but that fake, that hint, is kind of throwing the timing off between Mohammed and Faison, but not on that last push. That he's a glider at the start and a strider at the end. First and goal from the eight. Keith Griffin behind the hogs on the right side, cracks inside to the six-yard line. It's second and goal. Again, the Eagles have a big battle going on. They were leading the Dolphins. Brett, what's happening? Jim, we've got a big story brewing now. The Eagles have had the ball twice, and they put up two touchdowns on the unbeaten Dolphins. This time, Jaworski goes to Tony Woodruff, third touchdown of the year. From 13 yards out, it's 14-0. Back to Jim. A shocker in the Orange Bowl down in Miami. Don Shula's Dolphins, they've got a comparable record down in the Orange Bowl to what the Redskins have here at RFK. Dolphins very tough to beat at home, but they're not at home this week. Second and six. Second and goal from the six. Keith Griffin will go the other way, and here come the Lions. Griffin bounces off the Detroit front four like a little bowling ball. And keep in mind, Keith is only 5'8", 185 pounds. And in talking with him at the Washington practice, he said, look, my size actually is an advantage because the defensive players hit me too high. But also, he can, he can get lost behind those hogs. You know, you got 300-pound linemen there, and Keith Griffin just gets behind them, gets in their hip pocket, and the defensive teams can't find them. Before they find him, he's down the field for four or five yards. Line of scrimmage now, the seven. It's third and goal. Calvin Mohammed comes out wide to the left. Monk out wide to the right. And the running back is number 30, Jeff Moore. Want to bet Theismann throws that floating pocket? Touchdown, Washington. Out of the backfield, Jeff Moore. Jeff Moore's second touchdown reception of the year. He came in with just 11 catches, but he made this one count. Well, again, this is Redskins football. They like to get on top of their opponent early in the football game. You see Theismann there. There's not much room there, but he, he drills it in there. Moore puts it away and gets in the end zone for the touchdown. Moore came to the, to the Redskins from the San Francisco 49ers. Mark Mosley playing in his 141st consecutive game. He has scored 1,175 points. He is seventh in the NFL all-time scoring list. And he's added the Redskins after Washington puts that scoring drive together for Joe Theismann, his 16th scoring strike of the season. And as we mentioned, that seven-yard touchdown catch by Jeff Moore, that was Jeff's second of the year. Pete Mandley, number 82, back deep for the Detroit Lions. He's to the top of the screen, and Alvin Hall, 35 to the near side. It'll be Hall at the two. Breaks it and look out. Across the 35, but a penalty flag thrown back at the Detroit 22. And again, the Detroit Lions, the most penalized team in the NFL, 
and they hurt themselves after a big return and good field position they'll go backwards well, they continue to hurt themselves they needed a good field position after the Redskins scored this will hopefully take the, some of the fire out of the Redskins but the penalty is going to wipe all that hope away holding no clip on the play holding as uh, indicated by Pat Haggerty there is Monty Clark four years left on his contract with the Detroit Lions he said earlier this week he said look I've been giving it my best since I came to Detroit his record is 42 wins 56 losses and one tie 54 on the return first down and he said I really got no apologies to make no excuses whatsoever we give it our best the offensive hogs of the Washington Redskins getting ready for their next series Thompson wide to the left for the Lions. Jeff Chadwick comes to the near side. Danielson bends in with Kenny Jenkins replacing the injured Billy Sims. Motion by James Jones. They dump it off to Jenkins. Jenkins across the 15, but Drew, you saw, I think it was Leonard Thompson on the seam wide open. That was James Jones down the seam wide open, but they had the screen set up, and uh, maybe perhaps they'll come back with that play later in the game, but James Jones was open in the seam on that screen pass to Kenny Jenkins. Drew mentioned at the top of the telecast what a great game Kenny had against the Eagles. He's an ex-Eagle, in fact. Eight catches, 128 yards. He spent 82 on the Eagles' injured reserve list and then was released in 83. Came to Detroit and was used primarily as a kick returner. That was behind Kenny Jenkins. And no pressure on Daniels. We know what happened on that play, Jim. Kenny Jenkins, being the young player that he is and a little bit of inexperience, he kind of ran that route right into the zone defense. What he was, Daniel Suman expecting him to do was hook up in that zone to catch the route, catch the pass before he got to the linebackers. With George Brett syndrome, I hope he's standing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell he's disappointed, dejected. The amazing thing about John Riggins, all the things he's accomplished this year, is that he is 35 years old. He's not no young man, so it takes his toll the pounding that he received. Lions looking at third and seven from their own 16. Here come the skins. Danielson unloads double coverage at the 20-yard line, and no penalty flag. As a former wide receiver, Pearson had the penalty flag. Well, I'm looking for a flag on that play, but it's good double coverage by the Washington Redskins. Dow Green had Chadwick all the way, and then got picked up with help there from uh, Curtis Jordan, number 22. Dangerous throw, though, by Danielson. That's all he had. The Redskins had good coverage in the secondary. Only th other thing Danielson could have did on that play was run with the football. Or throw it away. Or throw it away, exactly. Fourth and seven. Mike Nelms is back deep, and Nelms is at his own 42-yard line. So with any kind of return, the Skins will have good field position. They've already got a 7-0 lead. kick by Black. It's a wobbly kick. Line drive gives Nelms a chance. They've got the fleet flicker up. It goes to Olkowitz. Marty Coleman. Coleman hurls across the 30. How about that? Well, we thought the Lions would come in here trying everything because they really have nothing to lose, but here's the Redskins fighting for first place. And with a returner like Mike Nelms back there, you've got to respect him. He just sets it up and throws it over to Monty Coleman. And watch this move by Coleman. Olympic hurdler. <laughs> Mike Nelms threw that ball better than Drew Pearson did when he played for South River High with Joe Theismann. Skins lead 7-0 and are threatening again. Do you know me? It's frightening how many novels of suspense I've written. But still, when I'm not recognized, it just kills me. So instead of saying I wrote Carrie... There he is, number 51, Monty Coleman, on the receiving end. They had that play in to use last year against San Francisco. Yeah, they, they used it to Dow, Dow Green on that play, but it was called back. But this time it worked. Big, big field position for the Redskins. It was called a forward pass. There's a forward pass in the grasp of Art Monk down at the 23-yard line and a late hit. Theismann to Monk on a square out, and the Lions continue to hurt themselves with penalties. William Graham, the culprit there, number 33. Well, there's no question Monk was down. If he wasn't down, he was on his way down, and William Graham first just came foul, in. Number 33 on the defense, first down. It's just a short pass, a quick hitch route. They're giving Monk a lot of room on the corner. He makes the catch. He's already in the grasp of Bobby Watkins, already down on the turf, and here comes William Graham over top. 
And that's a penalty in any league. Not the kind of a mistake you can make when the Redskins are starting your drive deep in your own territory. Washington already leading seven to nothing. That catch, by the way, by Art Monk is now a personal best. He had 58 his rookie year. That's his 59th catch. He averages almost 16 yards per catch. Oh, he's having a super year. He's really come on with the loss of Charlie Brown there. And before Muhammad learned the system and fitted into the Redskins system, the only man in that receiving core has been Art Monk. First and 10 from the Lions 12. Slot left. Theismann airborne quickly. Looks for the left corner. Calvin Muhammad cannot go up and get it. Incomplete the single coverage with Bruce McNorton back to defend. We just seen something in the coverage there and just went to a quick audible to Mohammed on the play, but the ball was just overthrown. Speaking of Theismann, what was his nickname in high school? What'd you call him? Sparkle? We call him Sparkle in uh, high school, and Theismann was unbelievable. He's an unbelievable person because he, he talks so much. He has so much energy, and when we were in high school, we always have to make an appointment to get a word in edgewise with Theismann. Second and ten from the 12 of Detroit. Same play. Penalty flag. He pumped him in the end zone. First and goal for the Washington Redskins. Again, Seisman's seen something in the coverage. You see Art Monk on the inside, the right side of the screen open on the inside, but Seisman elects to go back to the outside again to Mohammed. And he's making a move for the ball. Looks like he bumped McNorton, but the Redskins get the call. They get most of the calls here in RFK Stadium. Believe me. Didn't look like a bad play by McNorton. That was a good play by McNorton. Muhammad was just making a move to the ball. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that was incidental contact on the play. And that's coming from a former wide receiver. He wants the call. <laughs> okay, Detroit man. penalties now four for 42 yards. Give him a break on that, Jim. Keith. Otis Wansley. Touchdown. on that right side by Kenny Huff, 61, and Mark May, number 73. Well, Wansley will be put in the game in place of Riggins. He's their tough inside runner when Riggins is not around, and he just follows the halls right in the end zone it's by Mark May, led by Mark May and Ken Huff in that blocking there. There is head coach Joe Gibbs, who's innovative play calling, that flea flicker, flicker from Nelms to Matty Coleman set up the easy drive. The point after is good by Mark Mosley, so the skins have struck very quickly. Two quick touchdowns late in the first quarter, and it's Washington 14 to nothing, and we've still got 59 seconds left to go. Don't forget, next Saturday, Pete Matley said, wait a minute, are you crazy? Well, that was a smart thing to do. That ball was too high, too far in the end zone to uh, even think about bringing it out. Well, that schedule could be scrambled a bit because the Cowboys in St. Louis, tough place to play, as Drew Pearson will tell you. The Giants at Tampa Bay and Chicago minus their quarterback. Steve Fuller goes against the L.A. Rams for that big game. Second half of the doubleheader, the Cowboys and the Cardinals. Reese McCall in motion. James Jones reverses his direction and look out. Almost to midfield. Daryl Green saved a touchdown. Daryl Green has 4-3 speed, and he needed all of it right there. Watch the block here from Reese McCall in motion there. That gives James Jones the hole he needs, and a great cutback by Jones against the grain. Got the Redskins going one way, cuts back the other way. He's got a lot of room to the outside, but here comes Daryl Green. He's going to beep him over, beep, beep, and then give him a ticket and bring him down. James Jones, the number one draft pick a year ago. Monty Clark said if he could have any football player... Any fullback, he would want James Jones. He thought that highly of the young man coming out of Florida. Jenkins across the field. How does a 13-year veteran from Stephen F. Austin keep his toe warm when you're a place kicker? I guess he wears a booty, and I guess that does the job. Well, if Namath can wear patty hose, he can wear a booty. Second and four, Detroit from the 46 of Washington. Motion across. Here comes Reese McCall. And there goes Kenny Jenkins hurling for a Detroit first down. Close to the 40-yard line of Washington. The strong safety, Ken Coffey, the man that came up to make the tackle. Speaking of the strong safety, what was Tom uh, Landry's philosophy down in Dallas when you played the Redskins? Oh, the number one thing we had to do, and he didn't worry about the offensive line, and this is for the wide receivers, or the key to our running game was to block the strong safety. Because the Redskins like to use the strong safety in situations where he's always forcing the run, plugging the holes, 
and uh, we always had to go in there and block them. Something I didn't like to do very much. You had a different <laughs> philosophy. Well, my philosophy was to live the player another day, and I would sometimes miss that strong safety, but I'd be there next week. Reese McCall, motion top of the screen. Danielson play action on first and ten. McCall, he's got it, but nowhere to run. Gets back up, and here come the Redskins defensively. Picks up only two tough yards, brings up second down and eight. Tony Peters, the first to get there. Peters, number 23, in his ninth year out of Oklahoma. And you know Tony Peters. You had some good battles over the years. Yeah, Tony Peters, one of my favorites over the years. He has a devastating forearm. He's playing a corner right now, but normally he's a strong safety. Uh, and he kind of reminds me of Kenny Houston, another great player over the years for the Washington Redskins. And those guys had two devastating forearms. Second and seven as Danielson bends in. Leonard Thompson wide left. James Jones spins and fights and keeps on spinning up near the 30-yard line. Very close to first down yardage. It'll bring up third and less than a yard. We check in around the NFL today. The Eagles were ahead of Miami down in Dolphin Country, 14 to nothing. Look at the Saints against Atlanta. Long week for Dan Henning. San Francisco, 6-0 lead against the Browns. Marty Schottenheimer looking for his second win. Green Bay up against the Tommy Kramerless Vikings. wonder if it's Archie Manning or Wade Wilson starting. And the Eagles still, there's a shocker down in the Orange Bowl. 14 to nothing. Two possessions, two scores. And of course, we'll have all the scores and highlights at halftime with Brendan Irv. Battle of field goals at Riverfront Stadium. Danielson will get the Detroit first down at the 30-yard line of Washington, blocking over the middle by Larry Lee, a history major out of UCLA, fifth-round pick of the Lions back in 81, and they need him because that offensive line is banged up. They've been having their offensive line problems, mainly on the left side. The right side has been, has been intact with Keith Dorney and Don Greco, but mainly on the left side they've been having problems. Art Monk, you felt like that when you come in here. Yeah, it's a, it's a humid weather here today, so the receiver's gonna, it's gonna take their toll on the receivers, and when they come to the sideline, they gotta get towels off and drink as much fluid as possible to avoid cramps. Leonard Thompson wide to the left, first and 10 from the Washington 30. Motion by James Jones. Kenny Jenkins will throw, wide open is Leonard Thompson, but he threw it to the wrong side. Leonard Thompson had turned almost on a post pattern and turned it inside, and Jenkins threw the ball outside. Well, you know, Jim, you work on the, a play like this all week in practice, and all week I'm sure Jenkins is thinking that Leonard Thompson is going to go outside, but the defense doesn't give him the outside on this play, and Jenkins just can't read him. He throws it outside. Thompson went inside. Easier for Jenkins, of course, to throw the ball outside because he's right-handed. Interesting play call. Hey, Monty Clark, when the Lions got into town yesterday, said, we're going to make some bonsai calls, let everything hang out. Well, if you're an ex-quarterback, you would know that. You just lay up. When a guy's open that wide, you just kind of lay it open, lay it up there and let the receiver make the adjustment on the ball. Never overthrow him. Danielson safety valves to Jenkins. Good speed, and Jenkins bangs his way down to the Washington 23. Daryl Green, the first to get there. What happened the first time you and Daryl Green met? <laughs> Well, I was really licking my chops when we played the Redskins uh, last year when Dow Green was a rookie. It was our first game of the season on Monday Night Football, and all I could see was 5'8", 175, 175 pounds, and I was just thinking I'm going to have a great day on Dow Green. But he really surprised me. On the first passing situation, Daryl Green came up and popped me with a forearm upside my head, and I guarantee I gained some respect real quick for Dow Green. Third and two for the Detroit Lions. You would suspect they're almost in a four-down situation, trailing 14 to nothing. Shotgun formation for Danielson. Slot to the left. A mix-up between the rookie, and it's interesting because Danielson has criticized Pete Mandeley, number 82, out of northern Arizona. Mandeley with that big contract. Take a look as Danielson throws it into the left corner of the end zone, and the receiver pulls up short. Well, Manley ran an out route. It's a different adjustment on different defenses, and Manley ran the out route on that. Danielson read the deep route. But the question in my mind is, why did Detroit try to pass the ball in third and two situation and not run the ball? They've been having success running the ball so far in this drive. Or how about trying to isolate Kenny Jenkins or James Jones? Eddie Murray who missed that crucial extra point in overtime last week against Philadelphia will try a 40-yarder out of the hold of Gary Danielson. And it's a fake. Another bonsai call. Danielson in trouble, and it is almost intercepted. 
Number 55, Mel Kaufman deflected the ball and almost came up with the INT. Amani said we'll pull out all the stops. In fact, several of the Lions got off the bus yesterday wearing Japanese headbands for their bonsai week. It's the bonsai attack. You see the play was supposed to go to the left of your screen there to Eddie Murray. Blocking as we get to the end zone replay here. You see there, in Ar and Keith Griffin, I'm getting ready to call him Archie. That's his brother, former Heisman Trophy winner. He just jumps in the, in the hip-packed pocket of those blocking linemen. Joe Jacoby going 305 pounds and rush rim 275. There comes Keith Griffin again. First down again for the Redskins up near the 33-yard line. Running over Fantetti and English got in there. Doug submarined and went down low. Doug English, number 78, ninth year out of Texas. And Russ Grimm in his fourth year out of Pittsburgh, number 68. They've had some pretty good battles over the year, and they've kind of got a mutual respect society going on. Well, they should because they're both top football players, and they had problems last year when they played against each other, but, you know, they, they settled their differences, and now they're going to battle once again. Interesting. They almost said the same thing about one another. Each gives over 150% regardless of the score or the record. Dyson back to him. Remarkable catch is ruled incomplete at the 40-yard line by Clint Didier. He did not have possession when he hit the ground. What a great move to get to the football. Well, this is what you call a hook and go. He's got Didier out in the corner. He fakes, and then he takes off. He gets that defensive back going. He's got him beat. And again, Theismann lays it out there. Great effort by Didier to make the catch. That's those gloves. That ball hits those gloves. They stick, but you can see the ball clearly on the ground. No catch. Did you ever play with gloves on? I, I know you did. I saw you in Philadelphia. I certainly did, but not in the warm weather. If it's cold enough to wear, and if we use them all week in practice, then you can use them in the game. But if you don't use them in practice, I suggest not to use them in the game because you just don't feel that like football. Slot left on second and ten. Monk is inside. Calvin Muhammad outside. And inside running by Keith Griffin, the rookie. Bangs his way up to the 40-yard line in the grasp of Gary Cobb. A goal line stand at the Orange Bowl. Here's Brent. Jim, can you stop Pete Johnson on fourth and one? The Eagles lined up against the big running back for the Dolphins, and they stuff him. And, Jim, that is unlike Don Shula. Normally, he kicks the field goal and gets on the board. Let's go back to Jim. Brent, I wouldn't try to stop Pete Johnson on fourth and goal. <laughs> he is like a missile silo. Third and three for the Redskins. Motion across by Calvin Mohammed. Seisman on an out pattern, looking, and it is incomplete for Art Monk at the 27-yard line. Bruce McNaughton, who's been burned several times, that time Drew came up with a big play. A nice play by McNaughton on the play as we look at Dexter Manley on the sideline. The defense is, is getting ready to go back in. It's their turn to come around, comes around again. Dexter Manley, his nickname is Mr. D. It's not, that's not after name, uh, that's that not is named after Dallas either. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. D stands for Dexter. He's in cowboy hat and cowboy boots yesterday. He really has that Texas flair about him, but he's playing for the Redskins, so he's, it's under control. I guess you remember that game when he knocked Danny White out and Hogaboom came in. Nope. Alvin Hall is back deep, and Jeff Hayes, who's punted once for 40 yards, pulls down a high snap. Gets away a high kick, and Hall, if he feels cleanly, will have good field position. Looks for the wall, stutter step, right side, across the 30, and hurls to the 33. So the Lions, trailing 14 to nothing, will have reasonably good field position. We've got 8.53 left to go on a scoreless first half for the Detroit Lions. They'd like to put something on the board before intermission. You're open. You're open. 10, and they open up with a double tight end. Reese McCall, 81, out of Auburn. Grand Valley State, Rob Rubick, 84. And his motion across by McCall. Danielson unloads safety valve for James Jones, and it wasn't so safe. Interesting, because Kenny Jenkins was flaring out of the backfield left flat. He was wide open. But the attention that time in the Redskins defense was on James Jones, and they did leave Kenny Jenkins open. Let's see if Detroit comes back with that play later in this game. Danielson not having a real good first half, as you saw that graphic, 7 out of 14, but just for 38 yards. All his completions have been to the running back, so except one to the tight end, Reese McCall, when he was lined up wide, so when he start going downfield to the wide receivers, it should be starting to open up for him. Got to get the ball to number 39, Leonard Thompson, Detroit's big play wide receiver, second and 10, Chadwick in motion to the bottom. Here come the skin. 
Danielson unloads and look out. It is intercepted at the 45 by the Redskins. Curtis Jordan came up with his eighth career interception. Not Danielson's fault, however. That was a deflected ball. Deflected ball. You see Danielson, when he drops back here, will get the good protection that he's going to need. Dave Butts putting pressure up the middle, but Danielson has had the time to throw the ball. The ball was deflected. Looking for Dan Leonard Thompson. Leonard Thompson. Daryl Green deflected it for the Redskins before Curtis Jordan came up with it. So again, the skins start deep in Lions territory. Dodge announced again. Motion across is Calvin Mohammed. Art Monk to the top of the screen. Dodge to Airborne quickly. Calvin Mohammed slithers inside the 40 down to the Detroit 37 yard line. How are the 49ers doing in the NFC West? Let's go to New York. Here's Brent. All right, Jim. Here's the best team in the NFC, the 49ers. But on third down, they have been less than 50%. But they ambush Cleveland with a draw play. And it's good for a touchdown by Roger Craig. They kick the extra point, and now they lead 13-0. Let's go back to Jim. 49ers, of course, with that 9-1 record and a big lead over the L.A. Rams, who are 6-4. Inside handoff, Keith Griffin slithers down to about the 35-yard line in the grasp of Ken Fantetti. Fantetti, number 57 out of Wyoming, missed the first part of the season. He had a screw, had to be removed from his shoulder. Around Detroit, some of the Lion fans will tell you he's got a screw loose. You look at Fantetti with those intense eyes through the helmet, huh? Well, he's a very aggressive player, the third leading tackler on a defense despite missing two football games. Lions defense will have to dig in here. The line of scrimmage, the 35 of Detroit. Griffin now nine carries, 32 yards. Theismann, five out of 11, 83 yards and one touchdown. First and 10, Washington. Keith Griffin hammers down to the 33 and the grasp of Doug English. In talking to English yesterday at the Lions Hotel, he said, we really have to dig down deep within ourselves. It's, it's difficult when you're mathematically really not in the race for a playoff position, and each man is playing for individual pride as well as for the unit pride, and there is a feeling amongst some of the Lions that they're playing to try to save Monty Clark's job. Calvin Mohammed at the top of the screen. Hart Monk to the bottom. Time to work to second and seven. Wide open. Didier inside the ten. Alvin Hall beaten on the coverage. The tight end was wide open on a post pattern. What a fine, or what a fine the Redskins have from Didier this year. They've been using him very effectively. This is 12th catch of the season. The three have been for touchdowns, and he runs routes. He played in college at Portland State with Neil Lomax, so he knows how to run pass routes very well and catch the football. Didier with 22 career catches of those over touchdown. First and goal from the eight. It has been all Washington, except for one Detroit drive that stalled. Hammering inside the five goes the rookie out of Miami. And again, keep in mind, he thought that his little size, just 5'8", was an advantage because the defensive players would bounce off of him. They would hit him too high. He said he, when he was growing up, his hero, his idol was Leroy Kelly. Well, being from that Ohio area that he's from, I'm sure when Leroy Kelly played for the Cleveland Browns, had no choice but to be his Keith Griffin's idol. Leroy Kelly, one of the top players, running backs ever played in National Football League. Rick Kane, number 40, ironically a former Detroit Lion, and Otis Wansley, 39, are the running backs for Thaisman. That is very close to a Washington touchdown again. Approaching the goal line, blocking on the right side by Ken Huff and Mark May goes Otis Wansley. You saw that sideline shot a couple of snaps ago of Big John Riggins over on the sideline. This is where you would expect to see Riggins in short yardage and goal line situations, but with a 14-0 lead and the game not really on the line, why risk further injury the man who's sitting out with back spasms? Touchdown, Washington. Blocking on the right side for Otis Wansley. Lions in deep trouble. the block by 85 also Don Warren at the bottom of the screen Redskins get that good penetration 
de in a defensive line of Detroit Lions and Wansley just fires, follows that blocking of the Hogs up front. Just falls in the end zone for, for another touchdown for the Redskins. Mark Mosley is shaking the booty used to keep his foot warm and out of the hold of Joe Theismann will try to add to the Washington League. 21-0 skins at RFK. They have won 19 in a row when they've led. And they have won 32 and 1 when they've led at halftime. They've got a big lead against the Lions. There is the scoring drive. Of course, it helped after the interception. It's been a short football field. Two of the Redskins drives starting across the 50-yard line. Good, good kick back to Galvin Hall. Three yards deep, and he'll bring it out. He will not get to the 20-yard line. A reminder, CBS Sports coverage of college basketball begins Saturday, November the 24th, with a game between two traditional powerhouses, the Cardinals of Louisville and Denny Crum, and the Hoosiers of Indiana. That basketball is coming up on November the 24th, but next week we've got football in the doubleheader. Drew? we got the Michigan Wolverines against the Ohio State Buckeyes, and two big losses in the Big Ten. Yesterday, Ohio State has destiny in their own hands to try to get to that Rose Bowl. And of course, next, after that, we'll have USC Trojans and the Crosstown Rivals battle against UCLA Bruins. Kenny Jenkins curls across the 20, up near the 22, blocking over on the left side of what Monty Clark calls the soup line. Donald Laster and Chris Dietrich all banged up with hamstring poles and ankle injuries. And Detroit, they've got to get something on the board before halftime. Well, they need something to try to get some momentum going for themselves. And uh, Monty Clark said before the game that they're going to pull out all stops and we haven't seen that yet offensively for the Detroit Lions and being down 21 nothing they certainly have nothing to lose by trying to trick plays or something to get themselves back in the football game penalty flags are down Danielson will run for the first down but the flags will have to be checked out first he'll dive up near the 43 if it's against the Lions now we've got another penalty flag late hit on the quarterback Danielson Again, Pat Haggerty is the referee. Danielson still down there. Late hit must have affected him. A little shaken up, looks like. A little woozy. We have defense offside. Personal foul. Defense. So that personal foul will be tacked on after Danielson dove for the first down at the 43. Watch the late hit. Well, Danielson's thinking about getting down right here. Takes that shot to the head from Daryl Green, famous forearm, and then Curtis Jordan comes over top, puts the finishing touches on him, and that was the penalty on the play, Curtis Jordan. Offside, defense, personal foul, number 28, defense, first down. So the line of scrimmage all the way up at the Redskins 43. Detroit desperately trying to put some points on the board before halftime. Four minutes left to go. There has been the penalty situation. And of course, the Lions, the most penalized team in the NFL. Danielson sending number 39, Leonard Thompson wide left. Chadwick wide to the right. Kenny Jenkins to the 30. Second down and seven about the strategy of keeping it on the ground. Now, Monty Clark calls all the running plays. Bill Nelson, with his back to you, calls all the pass plays. He's the offensive coordinator in his first season. Yeah, I think on that play, though, Jim, I think they would just want to give Danielson a chance to shake the cobwebs out of his head and get, him, get his uh, self back together from that lift he took from Darrell Green and Curtis Jordan. And now I'm sure they're going to put that ball back in the air because the time is running down here in the, in the first half. Both the Lions and the Redskins, all three timeouts remaining. Line of scrimmage now the 41, not the 40. So it's second and eight. Redskins jumped offside. Safety valve to James Jones. Let's check out the penalty flag with Pat Haggerty. Rich Mallott came up to seal off the lane on James Jones, whom Monty Clark says is much in the mold of William Andrews when it comes to NFL football, fullbacks. I could guess it was Dexter Manley that jumped up. Three eleven left to go before halftime. And the Lions... Second and three for the Lions. Floating pocket. Danielson better get rid of it. In 
incomplete to Kenny Jenkins. There's a case where he just turned it upfield before third and three. Shotgun. Motion by Mark Nichols across. Back at the 40-yard line, Dexter Manley, his second sack of the afternoon. He came in with seven and a half. This year, 31 and a half sacks for his career. The man nicknamed Mr. D for obvious reasons. He gets that time to throw. When your quarterback, you're only looking for three and a half to four seconds to throw that football. And Danielson's trying to buy some time there, and here comes Manley. But the Redskins had great coverage in the secondary downfield on the, the receivers for the Lions. Three sacks now for a minus 26 yards for the Redskins against Danielson. Mike Nelms, number 21, is back at the 10-yard line. Mike Black will go for the far coffin corner. And he nailed a beauty inside the 10. It'll be first and 10 for the Washington Redskins. Joe Theismann's got 2.49 left to go for halftime. Lots of time for Joe Theismann. The rookie out of Miami, Keith Griffin, behind the blocking of Mark May and Ken Huff. The Dolphins were trailing the Eagles 14 to nothing. I think Miami's on the board. Let's go to New York. Brent? All right, Jim, here's the touchdown you just spoke about. Touchdown number 30 for Dan Marino, and he throws to a running back. Tony Nathan coming out of the backfield, and now it is 14-7. Back to Jim. Keep in mind, a week ago, the Dolphins were down most of the football game to the New York Jets, and then they exploded in that second half, late in the second half. We've got 2.43 left to go, and there's a timeout down on the field taken by the Detroit Lions. They would like to create a little excitement and put something up on the board. So we started to tell you about that college basketball for the Lions defense right now, looking at third and three from the 13-yard line. The Lions have used their second timeout. They've got one third and three. Motion by Calvin Mohammed. First down to Didier up near the 24-yard line. He's been Theismann's main man all afternoon. Well, he's been a clutch receiver for the Redskins the last two years, and especially this year. Theismann's really looking to him. They used to use Rick Walker a lot in this situation, especially last year, but this year they're going to Didier. He's healthy, and he's, he runs better pass routes, and he's not as big, and uh, he's a lot quicker than Rick Walker. So he's been a key man for the, the Redskins. You see Monty Clark on the sidelines, and definitely not, definitely not happy for him. Pressure is definitely RFK Stadium here in the nation's capital. The Redskins leading the Lions, 21-0. Three timeouts left for Joe Thyssen. Underneath to the rookie out of Miami, Keith Griffin up near the 33. Gotta love Thysman's strategy. He says, give me one timeout and 54, 55 seconds, and I think I can take him down 80 yards to score. Well, he has the experience to do that, and also has a good experienced football team around him that can do it. And wait for Calvin Muhammad to get back. He just ran about a 60-yard post route, so I know he's tired. Calvin Mohammed dives up near the 40-yard line. Penalty flag is thrown. A late hit out of bounds. Another costly penalty against the Detroit Lions. Jimmy Williams, I believe, number 59 out of Nebraska, the culprit there. So they'll tack on a few more yards. Well, these are the things you can't coach. You know, you, you know there's a lot of pressure on Monty Clark, but these are the types of things that he has no control over. I mean, you tell the players about it, but when something like this happens, the player's already down, out of bounds, and here comes Williams, uh, making sure he's out of bounds. But the coach cannot coach those things. He can make the player aware of it, do drills and practice to, to, to try to prevent it. Personal but foul, it, number 59, defense first foul. My buddy Pat Haggerty. But when it happens on the field in game situations, the coach has no control over it. In talking to Monty yesterday, he said the word sympathy, however, is not in my dictionary. He's not looking for any at all. And has a lot of character. But well, what he did was told the guys to live up to the situation they're in. From the 44, first and 10, Theismann and company go to work. Art Monk wide to the right. That's Calvin Mohammed with his shirt tails out to the left. Floating pocket. Here comes Doug English. Theismann throws it to Joe Jacoby. And Pat Haggerty couldn't find the handkerchief. Theismann doesn't like the call, but... Jacoby was the closest redskin to the football. Speaking of Jacoby, how about the battle big number 66 for the Redskins had last year with William Gay of the Lions? They got a little mad at each other, and <laughs> Gay drop kicked Jacoby's helmet about 30 yards downfield. Jacoby didn't like that too much. 
You don't want to get Joe mad. He's only 6'7", 305, and he's a cardinal out of Louisville. And he's like a whole offensive line himself, and he's become... Intentional grounding, more than 10 yards, plus a down. He's become Second the down. mold, excuse me, Joe Jacoby's become the mold of offensive tackles in the National Football League for the 80s. Joe Gibbs, when he came over to the Redskins, thought he was a defensive lineman. Second and 24 for Theismann now from the Washington 42. Monk right, shirt tails out to the left, Calvin Mohammed. Here comes Doug English, incomplete and almost intercepted by the man who was called for the late hit, Jimmy Williams. And he would have gone 43 unanswered yards. You know, the Lions defense actually not playing that badly. I mean, two of the drives for the Redskins starting across the 50-yard line. Well, the thing is, they're spending a lot of time on the football field in this in this uh, first half, and that's going to take its toll before the game's over, I'm sure. Theismann now, 10 out of 18, 140 yards, one touchdown. That to Clint Didier, Otis Wansley, two short touchdown runs. Of course, number 44, John Riggins not in because of back spasms, George Brett syndrome. That's to the right in the slot formation, Mohammed and Art Monk. Theismann in trouble. Loses the football and pulls it back down at the 41. Doug English forced the fumble. That was almost the turnover the Lions needed. The Lions made an adjustment in that floating pocket for the Redskins. You see Theismann really upset there. They made an adjustment. They cut off the outside to force Theismann back inside. And he almost fumbles the ball and gets put away by Doug English. Uh, you said his name was Sparkle. He's jawing over on the sidelines right now. He is not a happy man despite a 21-0 lead. Jeff Hayes would like to back Alvin Hall up deeper in his own territory. Hall standing at about the 25 of the Lions. I think the Lions will try to block this punt. Here goes Hayes. Lions were going after it. A high, high kick. Good kick by Hayes and Hall in trouble. So Detroit, with 37 seconds left, will start from their own 20 yard ball in their direction this time around. Shotgun for Danielson. Redskins, surprisingly, not in their prevent defense. Underneath. Dexter Bussey bumped out of bounds up near the 26 yard line, but that will not be enough for the first down. But he did get out of bounds to stop the clock. Detroit with just one timeout remaining. At halftime, of course, we'll have all the scores and highlights back in the studio in New York with Brent and Irv. And, of course, coming up also, Irv's feature, Legends of the Game. What an innovator, Sid Lucky. Former head man in San Diego, assistant coach under Dick Vermeil in Philadelphia. A man who did so much for the forward passing game. Second and three. Shotgun again for the Lions. Leonard Thompson wide left. Chadwick and company to the right. Dexter Manley. That's a Detroit first down up at the 40-yard line to Pete Manley, and the rookie gets out of bounds up at the 46-yard line. Danielson with Dexter Manley breathing hard down his backside. Good job by Pete Manley, Manley to get out of bounds. Make that move, pick up some extra yards, and get out of bounds to keep this, the clock stopping the drive going. Just one timeout remaining for the Lions, who trailed 21-0. Detroit came in 3-6-1, some very dim playoff possibilities for the Lions three and a half games back of the NFC Central Division leading Chicago Bears but Chicago without Jim McMahon out with a lacerated kidney Steve Fuller ex Kansas City Chief and ex Tiger from Clemson will start today Danielson up top incomplete looking for Dexter Bussey out of the backfield Monty Coleman back there on the cover now Dexter Bussey we did the game in which Billy Sims got knocked out on that hard carpet in Minnesota Bussy came in, played well, but the only reason Bussy got the start instead of Kenny uh, Jenkins was the fact that Jenkins was bothered with a bad toe. That's right, and Bussy came in and did a great job for the Lions as they came back from a 14 and nothing halftime deficit in that game against Minnesota to, to pull out the football game. But the man that they want to go with right now are in this, not in this situation, but to start the football game was Kenny Jenkins, and you know he's proven he can play in the National Football League. Of course, the man they'd really like to have in there is Billy Sims, out for the year with an E injury. What Danielson has done so far. Three wideouts to the left side. Flood formation. Danielson, a rainmaker. Hail Mary time. Intercepted. 
Ricky Smith, the nickelback, and they've got something going. Danielson chases him out at the Detroit 49-yard line. However, there's a penalty flag. A flag to be checked out. Line up three wide outs on the same side. Just throw it up and hope one of them comes down with this. It's called the Hail Mary pass. And they're laying it up. The Redskins are laying back forward, and they're going to go into their tip, tip drill, something that defensive backs work on every day in practice. And it paid off that time for the Washington Redskins as Ricky Smith brings the ball back upfield with two seconds left. And I'm sure the Redskins might try to throw this down in their own version of the Hail Mary to try to get something out of, out of this with two seconds left. An inadvertent flag, Pat Haggerty said, was dropped down on the field. So with two seconds left, how about Calvin Mohammed on a fly? Monk, Mohammed, and here goes Theisman. He'll put up a rainmaker. He's it from the 35. Virgil C. at the one. Had he broken that tackle and got around the 20-yard line, Virgil C. would have gone 80 more yards. Albert Latimer, third year out of Clemson, the first line to get down there. So it's first and ten for Theismann and the Washington Redskins, the man that they used to call Sparkle for the Rams back in South River, New Jersey. Did that team go undefeated? Is that, is that true? That team went undefeated, and we were unscored upon for our first six games. So we had an awesome team, again, led by Theismann. We told you what the Redskins have done here at RFK when leading at the half, and there it is graphically for you. Monk right, Mohammed left, and Griffin left. The rookie out of Miami. First down for the Redskins. Alvin Hall chased him out of bounds. Otherwise, he would have chased him down the tunnel at the other end. Well, the Redskins didn't do anything different in, in, a, in the locker room. They came out and said, we're going to stick to that same game plan. And there's the Hogs blocking for Griffin. He gets lost in there. And then he all of a sudden, he comes out of nowhere right down the sidelines and gets run out of bounds. He told us he had good speed. You saw a demonstration of it there. Griffin, a 17-yard pickup. He now has 60 yards in the game on 13 carries. And the concern written all over the face of that man, Monty Clark. Same play. Different results. A pickup of two. It's second down and eight. Griffin chopped down by Doug English and Kia Pearl Harbor. 14.08 left to go in this third quarter. Three straight running plays for number 35, Keith Griffin. This is the Redskin attack. They're going to keep that ball on the ground as much as possible here in the second half. As long as that running game is going, then they're going to keep it on the ground. Looks like he's feeling a little bit better in the second half than he did in the first half. Well, certainly the team's in good shape. He's not sore. He's got it this week to rest. Yeah, he is sore. Uh, he's sore, but <laughs> he's not going to get any sore, I hope. But uh, he has this week to rest. It's a big plus for the Redskins football team to put a player of Riggins' caliber on the sideline and still be up 21 to nothing. Third and three. Audible now by Tyson as he moves Jeff Moore over. Jeff Moore will get a Redskin first down, rushing into Lion territory, chopped down at the 49 of Detroit in the grasp of the Tyson up top on first and ten. Here comes Doug English, and there goes Tyson for his life. William Gay. We'll get him six yards behind the line of scrimmage. William Gay, number 79, came over to the Lions in a trade from the Denver Broncos back in 78. Monty was doing some experimenting earlier this year, shifting William Gay from the left side to the right side back and forth, and it caused some confusion for him. Well, William Gay is normally a right side defensive player, but they shifted him to the left side, and that really caused problems for him. He's played all up and down the defensive line, tackle, nose tackle, in, but he had the most problem playing that left side of the defensive end. Now he's right back at home on the right side. He has five sacks this year. Two Detroit sacks of Joe Theismann for a total of seven yards. Calvin Mohammed to the left, Art Monk to the right on second and 15. Incomplete, and what a collision at the 35-yard line. We refer to that as the Drew zone. Ooh. And what a hit by number 27. Oh, so he's lost the side. Jeff Moore. This is motion by Didier coming across. Third and 15 for Joe. Complete and almost intercepted at the 40, looking for Art Monk. 
Bobby Watkins back there on the coverage again. Watkins, second-round draft pick of the Lions back in 82. So the Detroit defense did the job. It shut Washington off on their first possession to start the second half. A good wrap by Monk. He was open momentarily, but did not come back to the football. That gave the defensive back time to come in and break the play up. Jeff Hayes standing back at his own 32-yard line. Three punts so far this afternoon. And Alvin Hall is back at about the 13. Check it at the 7. Jeff Hayes hangs a high, high kick. Alvin Hall has some problems with it. And down he goes with his football. The Skins have got it inside the Detroit 10. I believe it was Trey Junkin out of Louisiana Tech. And that shot of Alvin Hall pretty much typifies the Lions season. Well, when it rains, it when it rains, it pours here for the Detroit Lions. And Alvin Hall is normally not the kickoff uh, punt return man for the Lions. Robbie Martin normally is the man, but he's been injured. And Alvin Hall had to be pressed into duty. And this is a costly turnover for the Lions. You see Monty Clark on the sideline there. There's nothing he can do about mistakes and turnovers like that. Make his team aware of it as much as possible during the week. As we see Anthony Jones coming off the field, shaking up a little bit. But the coach can only do so many things to try to prevent mental and the physical errors of that type. Anthony Jones is a rookie tight end out of Wichita State. 6'3", 248, an 11th round pick. He plays in what the Redskins call their jumbo offense. First and 10. First and goal from inside the 10. Ties the floating pocket to the right. Unloads to Monk, and he gets hammered out of bounds at the five-yard line. William Graham putting the pressure on Art Monk, and watch from ground level as it comes right towards you, Drew. You see Theismann's going to set up and then come out of this design rollout, design scramble. He's got big man Russ Grimm out there for protection. Art Monk ran in what we call a zoom-out route, takes it in and brings it back out. Good safe route creates a second and six situation, second and goal. We talked about that jumbo offense when they get down in there in the goal line situation. They bring in four tight ends. Now the five offensive hogs ordinarily weigh 1397. They bring in the four tight ends and here comes half a ton more. <laughs> second and six. Theismann wants Didier. Penalty flag, pass interference, first and goal. Boy, the Lions have just hurt themselves immeasurably in this game. This time they put Jimmy Williams on Didier here and uh, he just grabs him and brings him down. Good takedown by Williams. And good thing Theismann let the ball go on this play. Theismann's really throwing the ball away, but it's a good thing he let it go. If he didn't throw the ball, there wouldn't have been no pass in the field. That looked like Larry Holmes against Bone Crusher Jones the other night. <laughs> Number another penalty against the Lions and again giving the Redskins another opportunity to put the ball in the end zone. First and goal from the three. The Redskins have started from the nine of the Lions, from the 30 of Detroit, and from the Lions 45-yard line on their scoring drive. Six penalties, 59 yards against Detroit. And of course the fumble by Alvin Hall on the punt setting up this apparent Washington score. More in motion. Wansley will get the call. Right side. He walks in. Touchdown spin. Otis Wansley, who in four years didn't score one touchdown, has three this afternoon. Look at this blocking up front. Great penetration into the line, through the line, defensive line, and Wansley just follows that blocking and takes it in the end zone for his third touchdown today. He followed Mark May, 73, out of Pittsburgh, and Kenny Huff, 10 years out of North Carolina. And it is a huge Washington lead. Out of the hold of Kaiser, Mosley makes it 28 0. We might see the Lions. Going to tonight, talking things over with head coach Joe Gibbs. A 28-0 lead. The Redskins, six and four, tied for the top spot with the Giants, Cardinals, and Cowboys in the NFC East. Look like they'll stay tied for the top spot. And of course, Dallas and the Cardinals coming up next for many of you on Doubleheader Sunday here on CBS. Alvin Hall, who fumbled, has to be told to stay into the end zone by Pete Mandalay. Eagles and Dolphins with a good one in the Orange Bowl. Let's go back to New York and again, Brett in Philadelphia. 
First and ten for Detroit. Danielson remains the quarterback. They keep it on the ground to James Jones. Now, how about this situation? You're behind 28 to nothing. Monty Clark told us at the hotel yesterday that under some situations, he would go to John Witkowski, who's actually listed as the third quarterback on the depth charts. He's the rookie out of Columbia. That actually Mike Maturik has fallen a little bit behind. Witkowski with a strong arm, good intelligence, and Monty's very high on the young man. Well, they certainly need some passing in this situation. The run's not going to get the, the Lions back in the game. Monty Clark said before the game they're going to pull out all stops, but offensively, we've seen a lot of bases. Second and eight. Penalty flags all over the field. Danielson unloads to Dexter Bussey, who cracks it across the middle defense. Now the skins anticipating pass, and again it's Dexter Bussey, and he drops the ball. You know, you've got a feel for Monty Clark. Alvin Hall drops a punt. Wide open receiver right there, drops a pass. And as you've been pointing out all game, you can't coach those in 10. James Jones motions to the top. Here comes Dexter Manley and Daryl Grant, and there goes Gary Danielson. Dexter Manley, his third sack of the afternoon. Penalty flag is down. Let's check with Pat Haggerty. Danielson was sacked back at the 22 of Detroit. Skins are saying it's against Detroit, and it is. You said it earlier, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> well, this time Manley comes, and he just comes in almost untouched. He takes the inside route. They call a limbo, a tango move, and he just comes inside. No one picks him up, and Gary Danielson goes down. Shortest distance between two points, the straight line. William Clay Ford, the owner and president of the Detroit Lions, and Russ Thomas, general manager, sitting to his left. Ricky Smith, nickelback, number 26, who has an interception so far this afternoon in there for the Skins on third and 22. James Jones is wide open midfield, first down for the Lions, and Jones keeps barreling into Washington territory. And this time, there are no flags. Well, the Lions finally threw downfield, but it was again to the, one of their running backs. James Jones runs a corner route. Gets linebacker coverage there. He beats Rich Mallott on the play. A great pass by Danielson to lay it up over the linebacker and get it in there. And Jones, good running after he catches the ball to pick up some extra yards. Leonard Thompson has not caught a ball, number 39, who you see in the center of your screen right there. He is the Lions' big play weapon. Mark Nichols, number 86, hasn't had a ball thrown in his direction. And Monty Clark said of Nichols, we hope that he can do for our passing game with Billy Sims, ordinarily will do for our running game. Neither one involved in the Lions' offense. James Jones down at the 32, a pickup of about seven, bringing up second down and three. Mel Kaufman back there on the coverage. defensive adjustments to the Redskins make when you get a team that's playing so conservatively and just throwing to the running backs. It makes it easy to you have single coverage on the wide receiver. You put that uh, single coverage on the wide receivers and then you uh, try to double up the back with whatever who's left. And, and you can blitz. You can blitz. But in this situation they don't need to blitz because they're getting a good pass rush from the defensive front. Thompson left. Chadwick right. Danielson off the leg to James Jones. And James Jones will barrel down to about the 27 of the Redskins as he fights for first down yardage. Ken Coffey, the first of the Washington Redskins to get there and hammer him down. James Jones is getting a good work after that. Well, we alluded to Marty's comment about James Jones in the first half that he was the best fullback he'd ever seen, much in the mold of William Andrews. There is what he's done so far on the ground, and he's been very involved in the passing scheme of things. Leonard Thompson, he must get depressed going back. He hasn't had a ball thrown to him. Well, I'm sure he is, but he's a game breaker in their offense. If they want to get back in this game in a hurry, and they need to go to Leonard Thompson's deep. A great catch at the three by Rob Rubick, the tight end. Third year out of Grand Valley State. And that, I think, is only the second ball thrown to a Detroit tight end in the entire game. Well, this time, it's the tight end got man-to-man -man coverage. He's working on Ken Coffey. Coffey's more noted for being a run supporter, an aggressive tackler, but not real noted for his pass coverage. And you see Rob Rubick beats him on that corner route. Danielson laid it out for the catch. Thinking about playing a prevent-type defense instead of 
being aggressive, you're kind of sitting back on your haunches and hoping you don't get bit, beat deep. And the Lions had a good drive that time. Eddie Murray, 142 consecutive extra points. Will add to that total. Let's take another look at that touchdown by James Jones. And again, the blocking by 73 Laster and Dietrich, 72. You see the blocking there, and James Jones takes the handoff. See Don Laster on the ground there, but he has got his block already, and that opened up the hole there for James Jones. And Virgil C. It'll be Virgil C. at about the six. Hammered down at the 17. So the Lions specialty teams and defense have a job to do. So do the Eagles and Dolphins. They've got a good game going back to Brent. All right, it is third and two, Jim, for the Miami Dolphins. And Dan Marino goes for old reliable Nat Moore down to the one. Woody Bennett then crashes in. It's now 17-14. Eagles lead, but the Dolphins are coming. Back to Jim. Different so far in that game. The Paul McFadden field goal, Brent. But was Dan Marino, boy, you're never out of it. With an arm like Dan Marino and experienced receivers like they have, they certainly never have. No sophomore slump for him. <laughs> He's amazing. First and ten for the Skins. They've got a 21-point lead. And they've got the Eagles next week here on CBS. Theismann to Art Monk. And he's got out in front of him number 89, Calvin Mohammed. Monk up across the 25, bumped out of bounds at about the 28 by Alvin Hall out of Miami of Ohio. See Monk on the outside there. He takes a couple steps upfield, get that defensive back going, then takes a quick screen pass there from Theismann. He makes that some, some big yards on the play. Second and one situation there. Almost a free down for Theismann. Of course, John Riggins has not played at all. If he were needed on short yardage or goal line situations, he could play. So far, he is elected to rest. Keith Griffin inside the 30, across the 35. He just keeps on pounding. A powerful driving runner, Gary Cobb, there came up to make the hit. Keith Griffin has really impressed me with his running ability, and he takes that ball inside. You'd think he'd be going outside most of the time, but he's been running inside real tough. And he's small, but he's a tough man to bring down. He's small, but Joe Gibbs said he's a redskin kind of player. He fit in immediately. Griffin again. Skin will work on the clock. Hammer down at about the 41. Griffin will try the right side. A tremendous collision. William Graham, you can hear that one up here. I thought his helmet was going to come off. Well, he takes those, that collision and takes those licks, but he always ends up moving forward or falling forward, and that's a good sign, a uh, good positive sign for a running back. There is what Keith Griffin, the rookie out of Miami, has done so far. Second and two. Theismann works on the clock. 6.35 and counting. Left to go third quarter. Didier, the tight end, motions to the top. Keith Griffin will convoy that way, and look out. Here come the Lions, and there goes the rookie. Ken Fantetti, they had a blitz on, anticipating that Griffin would get the ball, and that time they guessed right. By that time, the Lions, they see something in that scatter report, and that movement came across to that side of the field, the right side of the field. They knew that play was coming that way, and they shifted their defense there. As bad a football team as their record, and it's blocked. Lions get the ball back, picked up William Graham, and it'll be inside the 20-yard line. Jeff Hayes had it blocked by number 26, Bill Frizzell, the rookie out of North Carolina State. So the Lions defense and specialty team playing very well in the second half. Well, the Redskins are noted for the specialty teams, and they really seldom have breakdowns like this. And you see the player coming in there, lays out really nice in front of the ball to make the block. William Frizzell, a rookie. Graham takes it inside the 20-yard line. So the Lions will come back and start first in goal. They've got a 21-point deficit, but they've got something going. The Lions, they trail by 21. That is the first block punt by the Lions for our Detroit Rooters since September the 11th last year against the Cincinnati Bengals. Chadwick left, Thompson right. Dexter Bussey in the backfield, James Jones the H-back. There goes Dexter Bussey. And he is down at about the 17-yard line in the grasp of Neil Olkowitz. How about the strategy of keeping it on the ground? So that time they put Jones in motion and used him as the lead blocker there to block on the Darrell Grant in the middle of the Redskins defensive front. 
but they're going to play it safe right now. They know they're in a situation they can take that shot in the end zone. It's second and seven. This is definitely a passing down, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Our ball's on the 16-yard line, so they're in good shape. They need a touchdown on this drive. There's no question. Take advantage of that, that mistake they created for the rescue. Bit of a problem with the clock momentarily, and Pat Haggerty waves his arms to get it going. Leonard Thompson comes out wide to the left side. Chadwick to the top of the screen. H-back motion by James Jones. Danielson looks underneath, fires for Jones, a little behind him at the goal line. Receiver turned it inside, the ball thrown behind him outside. Well, that's a seam route. James Jones came in motion, came across and ran a seam route. He was open quick. As he got further towards the end zone, it's being picked up by the Rex Redskins secondary, and Danielson just tried to throw the ball away from the coverage. How about Leonard Thompson? Does he go back to the huddle and says, Gary Danielson, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Leonard Thompson. I play on this team. I'm one of your wide receivers. Well, one thing a wide receiver can't do is get discouraged, but he has to keep campaigning for himself, let that quarterback know what he can get open on, what, what, he can, what has been working for him working against the Redskins secondary. Redskins rooters come alive a little bit. 28-0 lead, 21-point lead now. Lions knocking on the door. They need seven for the first down. Penalty flag is down. Danielson unloads to the 12. And I can't believe there wasn't a call on Rich Malott. Malott ran into Chadwick, and there was no penalty flag. There is a flag down as the ball was snapped, however, so Pat Haggerty will have a bit of a conclave and straighten things out. Roddy Coleman says it's against the Lions. Pat Haggerty says it's against the Lions. Would you take the penalty or decline it? It's fourth and seven. I knew you were going to ask me that. Right? Formation. Process declined. So I was thinking about it, and I declined that play. <laughs> Way to go out on a limb. Fourth and seven. Danielson looks over the bench. That is Monty Clark. And just to his left is Bill Nelson, who calls the pass play. This could be the football game on the line right here for the Lions if they don't get in. Well, they got nothing to lose. I, I admire Monte Parker going for it in this situation, even though it's fourth and seven. They're not settling for a field goal here. Trailing by 21, three points could mean much. James Jones cannot hang on. It was deflected in the left corner of the end zone by Monty Coleman. Deflected, but not really deflected enough. It was tipped. It was tipped early, but Jones had a play on the ball, but the ball being tipped, he lost concentration on it. Could have caught the ball. They get Danielson great protection in that situation. They ran that corner route. Jones is running on Monty Coleman, but there's Anthony Washington to help out. Hit, hits two defenders and bounces off James Jones' shoulder. Two incompleted pass in third and seven and fourth and seven. So Tyson will go back to work. Keith Griffin goes back to work, and the Detroit defense stops him after a one-yard pickup. Second and nine, Ken Fantetti playing like a man possessed. We talked about his intense eyes earlier in the first half. Well, he's an aggressive player in that middle. He likes to be around the football, and even when he missed some games, they had to kind of strap him to the bench so he wouldn't get out on the field. He was a very aggressive type that just loves to play. He said, hey, we have not played like a 3-6-1 team. Lady Luck has not been on our side. Of course, they've created some of their own bad luck with costly penalties. Second and nine for Theismann and company. 21 point Washington lead. Misdirection to Griffin. At the 20-yard line. Brings up third and long for the Redskins. Speaking of the Redskins, Mr. Jack Kent Cook was at the Washington practice on Friday. There he is in the hat. It was really surprising for me to see an owner of a football team at a practice session. In Dallas, our owner, Clint Murchison, at the time, never made himself available at practice sessions. And I was really surprised to see Jack Kent Cook, Jack Kent Cook at the practice session. I, I thought it was just great. You know what? Art Rooney of the Steelers goes to every Saturday practice, greets the players when they come out of the tunnel. Third and seven, Al Latimer, 43, the nickel back for the Lions. Theismann will try to pick up the first down by air, and he does a great diving catch at the 29 by Calvin Mohammed. There's Mohammed working on the man-to-man -man coverage, man-to-man -man situation. He takes McNaughton upfield, plants, and comes back to the football, and Theismann with his great arm zips it out there before McNaughton can turn his head and find the ball. 
Mohammed's out, out of bounds for the first down. Since coming over to the Redskins from the Raiders on October 3rd, Calvin Mohammed had 16 catches, 247 yards, and two touchdowns. He had six catches against the Falcons on Monday night. First and 10 for the Skins, leading by 21. Beisman in trouble and down in the grasp of Curtis Green. That's the third Lions sack. Beisman blindsided. Well, there's no question the Lions defense is playing a lot more inspired football, a lot more aggressive football here, here in the second half. And it's really helping their football team. If their offense can get going, take advantage of the opportunities the defense has given them, maybe they can get back in this football game. With a 21-point lead and Joe Theismann in, you're tied for the NFC Eastern lead. Why not take Theismann out, not risk an injury, and put up his backup, Jimmy Hart? Because I'm sure Coach Gibbs does not feel this game is in the bag or in the win column as of yet. They might do that later in the game, maybe perhaps later in the fourth quarter, but they don't feel this game is in the win column as of yet. Out wide to the left, Calvin Mohammed, Hart marks the forward wide right. Theismann bends in on second and 20. Throws it behind Calvin Mohammed. It might be whoever gets the ball last in the Orange Bowl. Brett's going to win. All right, Jim, do you remember when Pete Johnson was stuffed earlier? Well, he steps it a bit to the outside and gets into the end zone for the Dolphins, and Miami goes ahead for the first time. It is 21-17. Dolphins lead the Eagles back to Jim. He's like a two-legged refrigerator. <laughs> Well, he's a big one. You know, you say it about Jim Brown. He'd give you a leg and take it away. But Pete Johnson, he'll give you a leg and ram it down your chest. He'll give you a headache <laughs> is what he'll give you. He'll give you a four aspirin headache. <laughs> take two and take two more, then call me in the morning. Theismann looks now at third and 20. Monk right, Mohammed left. Here comes Doug English, and there goes Joe Theismann. Back at the seven-yard line. Gay and English with a stunt on. You've really got to admire the Detroit defense. As you pointed out several times, they really have been staying very intensified in this football game. They've kept hitting and not giving up. Well, you see English taking the outside rush. He starts inside, and here comes Gay from the outside to put Seisman away. But the Lions defense really has made a big improvement in their performance from the first half to the second half. And once again, the Lions are going to get good field position after this punt by Jeff Hayes. You know, except for that 10 turnover game against the Broncos, the Lions have really not been blown out. They've been in the games. We talked about losing four of their games by 11 points or less, or 11 point total, and then uh, the three overtime games. Comes Detroit again. They almost got the Hayes. Alvin Hall inside the 40, and the Lions will start at the 39 of Washington. They came up empty the last time. They've got a short field again. It's first and 10 Detroit. They start from the Redskins, 39, but they've got a long way to go, trailing by 21. Said for a little yard. Jeff Chadwick wide to the left. The lonesome Leonard Thompson to the right. Dexter Bussey at the 35-yard line. Need to go to him in this situation. Then why haven't they thrown to him now? We've got a minute and a half left to go in the third quarter. Dexter Bussey barrels for a line first down. Inside the 30, cracks it down to the 20. <laughs> Danielson to Thompson, and this time he can't hang on. So they had the post pattern call, and he was Danielson up top. Incomplete at the 20, and finally a penalty flag comes down. Looking for the tight end, Davis Lewis. Ken Coffey will be the culprit, I believe, and also back there in the coverage with number 55, Mel Kaufman. I'm still waiting for the call on Malad and Chadwick from the <laughs> previous series. Well, that time Coffey made a good play on the ball, but I, I believe his hand was Defensive on the receiver. Interference number 48, first down. His hand was his back hand was on the receiver as his front hand knocked the ball away. First down for the Lions with 50 seconds left in the third. Game. Down Detroit, Rob Rubick. The <laughs> Lions making a game out of it. Another look at the tight end, Rob Rubick, on the touchdown. We just start using Rob Rubick uh, this week in their offense a lot more. You see him line up tight there, takes that inside release. He's working, gives that corner move. Coffee's looking to the corner, trying to read the quarterback all the way. Rubick just goes by him to the post. Nice pass by Danielson to lay it in there for the six points. Danielson, 15 of 31, 169 yards, and that was his first passing touchdown. But you take a look at the completions against the yardage, he's only averaging about 10 yards per completion, which means, as you pointed out, he's been throwing to the back. Theismann. <laughs> in 
incomplete at the 35, and no flag. Didier hauled down from behind, and no penalty call. Well, Jimmy he, Williams, who's been called once, should have been called twice. Should have, certainly should have been called in that situation. I don't know what the ref was looking at or what he was thinking about, or even what Jimmy Williams was thinking about on this play, but he just reaches out and tackles Didier. Grabs his arm there. There's no chance to catch that football, even though it was five yards over thrown. Good thing there's not a screen here. <laughs> Redskin fans angry enough without showing it to them again. Well, they don't go for that. Not against their football team. Line of scrimmage, the 24-yard line. Second and 10, as Theismann bends in. Didier, who was just hauled down by Jimmy Williams. No call, was in motion. Theismann, look out, in trouble, and down he goes back at the 16-yard line in the grasp of Curtis Green. You know, off that penalty that was not called, we talked to several people within the Redskins organization who complained about the inconsistency of officiating in the NFL this season. Well, it has been inconsistent this year, and a lot of coaches around the, the league are expressing their opinions about the, ref, the refereeing and officiating. So, uh, again, we see the inconsistency. That was a clear pass interference call, and that time it didn't go for the Redskins, but... You know, the same thing happened for the Detroit Lions early in this quarter. They should have had a call against the Redskins, but they didn't get the call. Time ticking away here in the third quarter. A 28-point Washington Redskin lead has been sliced to just 14, and the Skins are looking at a third RFK Stadium here in the nation's capital. The Redskins, 28, Detroit 14, third and seven for Theismann. Motion and penalty flags all over the field. Theismann backpedals, almost slips, fires, deflected at the 30 that Pat Haggerty will have to confer with his officials. Joe Jacoby took quite a lick down in the pits, if you will. Big number 66 is holding onto that left elbow. His left arm looks like my left leg. <laughs> Six, seven, and 305. William Gay, I believe, jumped off sides, but was he drawn off sides? There is Joe Jacoby. Here is Pat Haggerty assessing the five-yard penalty against Detroit. Offside, 78 defense. Third and 12 after the penalty. Tyson gets another shot and almost takes advantage of it. Incomplete to Art Monk at the 35-yard line. So it's punting time again. And the difference, though, they started a drive at the Detroit 30, another at the Lion 45, and another after a fumble punt at the Detroit 9-yard line. Hayes gets it away. Detroit was coming. Alvin Hall with a fumble. Fields at the 33, and he's all kinds of trouble. Down he goes in the grasp of Rich Morty out of Penn State. We've got 14.39 left to go. The Lions three of the National Football League from that man, John Riggins. He has not played it down. The Redskins didn't need him with a 28-0 lead, but now it's 28-14. Danielson goes up top for Leonard Thompson. And Thompson with an incredible catch at the 30-yard line, but a penalty flag is down. Thompson went up over the back of Daryl Green. Now let's check the call. Based on Olkowitz's reaction, it is not against Detroit. He just shrugged his shoulders and threw his hands up and walked away. Well, my first feeling on the play was that Thompson had pushed the defender, Dow Green, on the play to make the catch. But it looks like this is going to go against the Redskins. I would say it's Joe Gibbs' feeling, too. He has ripped off the headphone and stalked on down to the 35. It is against the Redskins. Disregard the flag. The flag was thrown in error. The flag was thrown in error. Inconsistent. But anyway, this is a great catch and great effort on the football by Leonard Thompson. The ball was slightly on the throne, and he just went over little Dow Green, 5'8". You see the flag there. They said it was inadvertently thrown. Watch Thompson go up over the, the back of Dow Green to make this catch. It's just a great athletic move by Leonard Thompson. That got it. David Lewis, the rookie tight end out of California who's been criticized by Gary Danielson. Now let's wait for the call from Pat Haggerty. There is Nichols, the wide receiver, number 86. Washington comes up with it. Monty Clark in disbelief. The Lions have lost four of six games by 11 points. They've had three overtime games. They're the most penalized team in the NFL. St. Louis holding that ball out there. 
And Ken Coffey comes up, and their Redskins are noted for creating turnovers, and they create one there. A big one for the Redskins defense to get their Redskins back in this football game. 14-22 left to go, and the Skins defense helped Washington dodge a bullet there. Monty Clark is fuming. His team continues to make costly errors. 15. Griffin gets chopped down at the 20, and you can see the Lion defenders trying to strip the rookie of the football, and it may cost the Lions a penalty. William Gay, Doug English, Mike Kofer, and now we got some fisticuffs, and Theismann goes in and gets Calvin Mohammed and gets him back to the huddle. That fumble recovery by Neil Olkowitz, by the way, face mask against the Lions. Olkowitz had a fumble recovery Monday. <laughs> Did you know Michael Jackson? Walks off the penalty. Let's check in around the NFL today with the scoreboard. New Orleans had a big lead against the Falcons, but Atlanta's coming back. San Francisco, no contest against the Browns in Cleveland. Minnesota. Eagles had built up against the Dolphins, 14-0. It's been all Dan Marino. And Pittsburgh now with a five-point lead against the Bengals at Riverfront Stadium. New England with a 14-point lead against Buffalo. Bills, of course, have not won this year. Keith Griffin goes the other way. Keith Griffin up across the 30, up near the 33-yard line, and that's a Redskin first down. Ken Fantetti hanging on. Well, the Redskins are concerned about, concerned about just getting back into Redskin-style football, and that is there's Dexter Manley con congratulating Neil Oakwitz on the sideline. Oh, does Wansley? Wansley gives him a little hot. So the offensive five. guys do talk to the defensive yeah, guys. Yeah, sometimes. Only when they do good things, you know. <laughs> There's Monty Clark who's talking to himself. Exactly. He can't believe what's happening, but at least the Lions are making a showing here in the second half. In motion across, 89, Calvin Mohammed, First and 10 for Thysman in the skin. Joe out of the pocket. Look, fires incomplete at the 37-yard line. Looking for the tight end, Don Warren, and Jimmy Williams, who's had a busy afternoon on the plus and in motion to cross. Theismann for Art Monk. Incomplete at the 25, just off the fingertips. Bruce McNorton back on the coverage, but Theismann laid the ball out absolutely perfectly. Looked like Theismann to Pearson back at South River High. <laughs> South River High, the South River Rams. But this is Art Monk from Theismann to Art Monk, and he's been Theismann's top receiver this year. You see Monk start to find the football, and then he creates some gap there between the defender. He just lays out and just goes off his fingertips. Seen some great efforts on the football by both teams here in this football game today. I remember a game, your Cowboys were behind 23 to 3 at halftime here at RFK, and I think you guys came back and pulled it up. We came back and won the game, scored 28 points in the second half, and won the game 31 to 30. Last time the Redskins lost here in RFK. Third and 10 for Bison. One start, Monk. Complete and Monk became the defender. It was almost picked off by Bruce. Monk has seen enough of Alvin Hall on the punt coverage team. He's replaced him with Kenny Jenkins. Here come the Lions and they get it again. Detroit's football inside the 40 of the Redskins. I think it was number 54 for Detroit who came up with that block. Let's check it. But it's the Lions ball. Roosevelt Barnes out of Purdue. I think the man that got to the football, there's Roosevelt with a high five. You can do that. You can have the high five. You just don't do it in the end zone. That's right. No taunting. I'm really surprised. The Redskins noted for their special team. Hasn't made any adjustments here to try to block, to stop the Lions from, from blocking a punt. And they're coming. And Roosevelt Barnes is coming. He blocks it. He's an ex-basketball player from Purdue. Only played one year of college football at Purdue. Barnes came right up the middle. First and ten for the Lions. Danielson unloads post pattern to number 39, Leonard Thompson, and that's where he does not Chadwick to the left. Dexter Bussey just got the football. Danielson screaming for an offside call because in the backfield was big number 65, Dave Butts. He was there before Dexter Bussey got the ball. Well, I guarantee you, Butts was not offside. He just goes untouched into the backfield. Larry Lee, the center on that play, was supposed to pick him up, but Butts was, even though his size, Despite his size, it's just too quick for Larry Lee to get there to block. Dave Butts in his 12th year, 6'7", 295. Signed by Bobby Bethard, free agent from St. Louis. Still got explosive speed. Danielson, shotgun now on third and 12. Play action fake, and Danielson can run. Danielson inside the 25. Will slide down? No, he takes it inside the 15. First and 10 for Detroit. 
Oh, what a big play for the Detroit Lions. Gary Danielson reading the coverage downfield. Nobody down there. Picks up a big first down. See Danielson back there in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff there to Dexter Bussey. But he thinks run all the way. He just puts it under his arm. He's going downfield. He's looking for some help. Come on, Chris Dietrich. Get up there and help me. And he him to go down. He goes inside and picks up some extra yards. Takes a pretty good lick there. Danielson, as you see the time left in this football game, 22-yard pickup. Gary is 17 of 34, 223-yard passing and one touchdown. Lions can get this in for a touchdown. We've got a football game after a 28-0 Washington lead. Motion by James Jones. Dexter busted alone running back. Danielson bobbles the snap wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, but a penalty flag down in the backfield of the Lions. I believe it'll be holding. Rubik came up with the reception, but the Redskins indicating it's against Detroit. And look at Danielson. He is just fuming. He's stalking backwards. And there's a man who must be fuming as well. Uh, Monty Clark on the sideline trying to keep his composure. He still knows this football team in this game despite all the penalties, all the mistakes. Right. Danielson sets up a screen to James Jones. He's got a convoy. Jones slithers out at about the two line. They trail by 14. Look out. Unloads to James Jones too high and a penalty flag is down. Mel Kaufman was there on the coverage. And in the end zone, Nichols is screaming that he was being held up as well. Danielson saying there that somebody is holding his receivers downfield. That's what the call is. This will be a big penalty for the Lions. It'll give Detroit a first down. Redskins now, eight penalties, 62 yards. And this is a big one. Some of the breaks now are going in favor of Detroit instead of everything going against them, and that's why they're getting themselves back in this football game. That and the fact their defense has been outstanding in the second half, as have the specialty teams. Two block punts. The defense, except for an Otis Wansley touchdown run early. We have defensive holding, number 48, first down. Danielson, post pattern, Thompson, incomplete. Could not hang on. Danielson threw that ball beautifully. Well, the ball got through there. Didn't have much on it. Thompson lost it ball in the way. Got popped there by Curtis Jordan. Nichols in motion, bottom of your screen. Look out. Unloads. Corner of the end zone for Thompson. It's intercepted by the skin. This is still a live ball. Daryl Green off to the races. And more. Look out. Daryl Green. 100 yards. No flag. Touchdown. That's a touchdown. The Lions thought the whistle blew back in the end zone or claiming touchback. Joe Gibbs is not going to like this call. I don't see any official down in that end zone that the play happened in, but the Lions are saying it's going to be called back. So is Pat Haggerty. No one touched Green in the end zone. He did not down the ball. There is Pat Haggerty. It was Daryl Green stripping number 39, Leonard Thompson, of the football. He hesitated in the end zone. Now, he had not been touched. He was not down in the end zone. He did not kneel down. Did he elect to stay there? Let's listen to Pat Haggerty. The ball was ruled as a touchback. Well, if it was, there was no signal given. Watch in the right corner of the end zone and watch the official. See James Jones making his move on a corner out there. Uh, Leonard Thompson, excuse me, on the play. There's official in the back of the end zone. No official ruled him down yet. Back of the end zone, right next to Green, right there. He's, he nope. hesitates and he comes out. He never downed the football. He ran that 100 in about 10-5. Keith Griffin, the rookie out of Miami, up around the 23-yard line. The 100 line for the Lions defense again. Jumping offside, anticipating the count, Doug English and Curtis Green. And you could see the frustration. You could see how hard English and the rest of the Lion front four are playing, despite the fact they trail by 14. They have not given up. Doug and the rest have played like this since they were down 28 zip. They've been coming. They've been coming the second half. They've played like two different teams from the first half to the second half, and 
They've been real impressed with their defense. Griffin hanging on to the football. You can see the Detroit defenders trying to take it away. Mike Kofer, number 66. Sometimes a defensive end, sometimes a linebacker. They put in a special defense for Mike Kofer. That's right. They call it the Walker defense. And I don't know what it's like. Left to go in this football game. Keith Griffin corral about four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Now, before that carry, the rookie out of Miami had 25 carries for 95 yards. He is playing for the injured John Riggins. Watch William Gay with a lasso around his neck. William Gay comes down the line of scrimmage and sees Keith Griffin there. And he says, give me that neck. Tries to take it. Spins Griffin around. Here comes the pursuit of the Lion defense to put Griffin away. Now, if you're Theismann, of course, the plays are sent in, called by Joe Gibbs. But if you do pay with a pass, you go to a very conservative play call. Yeah, there's no question. You don't want to create a turnover situation here. Second and 14 for Theismann. Slot to the left. Mohammed outside. Monk inside. Lions coming with a blitz. Theismann reads it. Unload. He's got Calvin Mohammed, and he's out of bounds. Motion across by Calvin Mohammed. Theismann unloads. Shorten. First down to Didier and Moore. Green taking the ball away from Leonard Thompson and what looks like a touchdown. Keith Griffin. Hammered down after a pickup of one. Second and nine. Look out. Loose football. Penalty flag and Theismann will be called for grounding. I want to bet that Joe Gibbs is going to have a long playing feature film to send Art Matt McNally at the end of this game. Well, a lot of calls have, been, have gone against him on this play. The ball was, was tipped, so that should rule out any, any call for uh, intentional grounding in the football. If the ball is hit and tipped. Watch the play again. Theismann scrambling for his life. Little Joe, who usually has more escapes than Houdini or John DeLorean, in all sorts of trouble. He's got quick feet. He can move around back in that pocket. He's trying to throw it downfield there. And the ball gets hit there. Curtis by Green. Curtis Green. And that should eliminate any call of intentional grounding. Third and 29. That's a 21-yard penalty. Lions are fired up. They're trailed by 14. The time working against them. Everybody's off. Detroit jumps offside. Now, where they draw a radio show here in Washington. Third and 24. Theismann looks over the Lion defense. They'll play it safe to Keith Griffin, the rookie. They'll hang out of the football. He gets upended at the 33. It's a putting situation. Brent Musburger's got an update on that wild dolphin eager. Don Shula's dolphin. Kenny Jenkins back. Jeff Hayes got to be nervous. Look out. It's a fake, and Hayes loses the football. It won't matter. Detroit will get it regardless of who recovered. Turnover again. How about the specialty teams? The last four punts of the Redskins, two have been blocked. This one they forced Hayes into a mistake, and he got one away. Kurt Dodge, who was one of the players who wore a Japanese bonsai cap getting off the bus to indicate their shoot-the-gap philosophy, the man that came down with it. You see the Lions overloaded one side of the Redskin punting formation there and just sent everybody. They put that pressure on Hayes. He did the right thing, not even try to punch. There's a little misdirection to James Jones, and he does a nice job. He cracks it inside the 15-yard line with some good broken trailing 28-6. Danielson reads the blitz, audibleizes to James Jones. First and goal at the five of Washington. Good call by Danielson. He saw the blitz coming, took the long count, audibleized, and it worked. Well, good, good call because he went with a running play instead of a passing play in this situation. Really crossed up the Redskins. See Curtis Jordan coming in there on the blitz, and James Jones runs right by him. And look at that move there. He steps out of that tackle, and gets the ball down inside the five-yard line. Clock the back 450 inside 450 when this ball is snapped. The Lions punch it in here. It's only a seven-point game, and the way the Lions' defense is going to play, that's not, that's not going to be enough. Nichols to the right. H-back motion across is Jones. Here goes Dexter Bussey. Cracks inside the four. Down four. The second and goal from the four. Danielson. Option look out. Better get rid of the ball. Throws it away. Up in the tuba section. Now the Redskin fans say, wait a minute, where's the intentional grounding there? The difference was there was a receiver in the vicinity of this. Pat Haggerty is stopped. 
Floating pocket for Danielson. Wants to come back against the grain, but to get rid of the ball, he's down in the grass at the 13-yard line. Dexter Manley. Yeah, the Redskins, I think, lead the NFL in defensive nicknames. Dave Butts is called Bruno. Marty Coleman is called Superman. Daryl Grant is called World. Daryl Green, 10 speed. Curtis Jordan is Wolf. Dexter Manley, Mr. D. Mark May, May Day. Tony McGee, Mac the Sack. Face mask, number 77, five-yard penalty. Well, that time, number 77, Daryl Grant, nicknamed World, made a worldly mistake <laughs> because instead of being fourth and goal from the 12, Pat Haggerty will step it off. Let's take a look and see if we can pick up the hand on the face mask of Gary Daniels. Well, it's unbelievable how many opportunities the Redskins are giving these Detroit Lions to get back into this football game. You see, Dow Grant putting the clamps on Danielson, but to bring him down, to help him. can hold, you start thinking about the possibility of an overtime. Rubik in motion. Danielson wants it. Fires out. Bad throw. Dexter Bussey was wide open at the two. That time, he just hung onto the ball a little bit and tried to force it. Wow, what a reaction there by Monty Clark. He knew that Dexter Bussey was wide open on the play. They had a great play designed for that situation where they brought Leonard Thompson inside. He picked the inside linebacker. That freed Dexter Bussey. But, but uh, Danielson couldn't get anything on the football. Fourth and goal from the four. Touchdown, Detroit. He hung on long enough, and the skins are furious. Jeff Chadwick, and we've got a real Donnie Brook in controversy here. The Redskins are in disbelief. They are an absolute shock. Danielson wants to make sure it's a touchdown and he doesn't get outvoted. He better get out of there before he finds something else out. There's all Redskins around. They can't believe the play, but it's definitely a touchdown. We've got a 28 to 20, 20 game right now. It's Pat Haggerty with the call. Wait a minute. Now he waves now, off the touchdown. Now Detroit is furious. Now they can't believe it. The official in the back of the end zone clearly signaled touchdown. Here's the throw to Chadwick. Chadwick is down the ground. Did the ground cause the fumble? There's the signal of the touchdown. And then Pat Haggerty will talk it over with his crew of officials, and it'll be ruled he did not have possession. The in the back of the end zone got overruled. You think Motti is asking him for his address for Christmas card list? <laughs> He's really upset. Diff, diff Chadwick, the ball was thrown in there. Good, good pass by Danielson. His great route down and in in that situation. But Chadwick just couldn't hold on to it clean. Create the controversy we have right here. First and ten from the four-yard line for the skin. 3.36 left to go. They'll keep it on the ground. The Detroit defense will try any of Florida Keith Griffin. Griffin now, 29 carries, 105 yards. Steisman strikes close to first down yardage to Calvin Mohammed. Clock continues to run, 3.20 and counting. Lions tried to force Calvin out of bounds. They're very close to first down yardage. What a great pass by Steisman. He really drilled that ball to Mohammed. Mohammed just ran a short hook. Look at Steisman. He's doing some refereeing himself right there. Was he like that in high school? I oh, always like that. Very aggressive man. We played together. He was a quarterback. He about two inches for a third first down. The rookie. Oh, that's Otis Wansley with three touchdowns around the right side, up to the 24. And that's a Washington first down. And that should just about do it inside of 240. Skins with a 14-point lead. Lions would desperately like to get the ball back, but... You really can't say enough about the defense and the way they've played the entire second half of the specialty teams with those two block punts. Well, they've played a lot more inspired football in the second half, a lot more aggressive, a lot more intensity. And, you know, I guess Monty, Cl Monty Clark was going to his quote that he said early in the week that we have to live up to the situation we created for ourselves. And the players are on the defensive side and special teams certainly did that. Griffin, the rookie, chopped down for behind as we get down to about the two-minute warning. But we mentioned again, about every football game they play this year. Theismann will put it up. And he's got Art Monk. And Monk will cross the 30, and he's in the first down yardage again. 
So the Skins have just iced it with that first down. We're at the two-minute warning. Washington leads just 1.58 left to go. There is Keith Griffin, and that is his 31st carry as he keeps the knees turning for a pickup of three. He's over 110 yards rushing. We mentioned he replaced John Riggins, the diesel, if you will. Riggins with those 31 100-yard rushing games in his career. This is Keith Griffin's first. You know the last Washington Redskin to rush for over 100 yards other than Riggins? Joe Washington. Joe Washington a year ago against the Lions when Riggins set out that game. Tonight on CBS, what are you going to watch? I'm going to watch 60 minutes, of course. And Ellis Island. That's right. I'll be right there. You'll be back home in Dallas to see it all. I'll be there by then. Over most of these same stations. The Detroit Lions, of course, will dip down now to 3-7-1. and one. Monty Clark's team losing four out of six games by 11 points. Three overtime games. Giants are up early over Tampa Bay. Many of you, of course, will see that game as part of our doubleheader Sunday. Denver on the short end to Dan Fouts and Eric Coriel in San Diego. We started to mention the uh, Lions will go to 3-7-1, and one, and undoubtedly Motti will be facing a tough week from the Detroit press when he gets back home. They, they, they haven't been easy on him so far this year, but he's not looking for any sympathy. He said he knows where to find sympathy in the dictionary up to the 40-yard line in the grasp of Jimmy Williams. The executive producer of the NFL on CBS for the second consecutive Emmy-winning season is Terry O'Neill. The senior producer, Charles H. Milton III. Today's game produced by Ed Gorin and directed by Bob Daly. The rest of the people who bring you the sights and sounds of the NFL on CBS who share in CBS's second consecutive Emmy. Our spotter today, Billy Werndell, stats by Joe Band and Ron Kane. Side of a minute after this play, begins work on the clock. Across the 40-yard line goes Otis Wansley. Quite a story for Otis, of course, this afternoon. Three touchdowns. Four years in the NFL. He hadn't scored one. He got three this afternoon. How about the Redskins now? We take a look at the schedule. The Cardinals, I think, have got the toughest schedule in the NFL over the rest of the season. The Skins, perhaps the easiest, because they don't play anybody in the division until the last two weeks. They've got Dallas and St. Louis. Well, they play Philadelphia next week, and then after that, down to the end of the division when they play uh, Dallas and St. Louis, and Dallas will be in Dallas and St. Louis will be here. So uh, then they got, a, they got a schedule of three games in 12 days because they play a Thanksgiving Day game. Excuse me, not a Thanksgiving, but a Thursday night game. Inside half a minute. Joe Gibbs, by the way, is 5-0 and oh following Monday night games. He told us yesterday he gets his players ready to gut it out and they try to play catch up on Wednesday. John Riggins did not take a snap. He did not play it down. Back spasms and George Brett syndrome. They will get him ready for next week. The Redskins by two touchdowns. A tough luck game for that man. Penalties, interceptions, and fumbles. They were close, but not close enough. So for Drew Pearson, this is Jim Kelly saying goodbye from RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. The final score, the Washington Redskins 28 the Detroit Lions 14. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.